Hi everyone and welcome along to Sonic Academy with me Chris. Today I'm interviewing a producer and a DJ who has worked with the likes of Jean-Michel Jarre and David Bowie and Kylie. He is longtime collaborator and label partner of David Goetta and he's also been nominated for a Grammy. He has just launched his Kickstarter campaign off the back of his latest album which is 9624 and he's here to chat to me today about the album, about the Kickstarter campaign and his amazing DJ career. Would you please welcome to Sonic Academy and I'm going to do this in my best uh, French accent, Joachim Garou. Is that is that correct yeah, pronunciation? It's, it, it's a good start, Chris. Good. Let's say uh, if you are real French, you have to say Joachim Garou. But yeah. the, the the way you did it is is pretty well. I give you a. Um, maybe you know, 15 on, on 20. Okay, that's fine. I, uh, my French teacher would be probably absolutely shocked to hear <laughs> about it. You know, I, I failed miserably my French exam, so uh, so just forgive me. Uh, Joachim, thank you very much for joining us yep. today on Sonic Academy. You, uh, you've you got a, a really interesting thing going on at the moment. You're you're in LA. You li- we were just talking off there. You live 50% of the time in LA, and you've just finished mastering your, your brand new album. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the album and also the interesting thing that's off the back? of it yeah for sure the the brand new album the name is 96 uh, 24 uh, which means uh, 96 kilohertz 24 bits mm-hmm. for all the music lovers mm-hmm. uh, because you are sonic academy you know what i'm talking about yeah, yeah. i don't have to, i don't have to say that i hate mp3 yeah 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 you know that already yeah. so uh, the, the the album is 25 years of it's just a let's say a big review with 18 tracks Talking about uh, 25 years of um, meeting people uh, like Jean-Michel Jarre, as you say in, in introduction, or or David Guetta, all those people. When I when I ha- when I was lucky to meet these people, meet these people, and make music with those people, um, that it was matching with with a certain uh, uh, year and, and and era. So uh, I made uh, I made this brand new album as um, as a book. You are you are watching. And uh, from uh, track to track, you're going to travel around the 25 years of DJing, producing and music. And the album is just done. I just made the mastering a few hours ago. Mm-hmm. It's going to be released on Ultra uh, January 22nd. And um, no, I'm very proud of that. And, and to give you um, uh, exclusive uh, news, <laughs> I have two chapters because 18 tracks is a lot. Yeah. Let's say it's such like a double album. So I have nine tracks uh into a special part called uh, 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 uh special uh, spatial or all the all spe- and the other the other the other part called vocal okay yes yeah yeah, yeah. So I have nine nine and nine yeah nine parts are the collaboration with the vocal track songs and nine track are is much more dedicated to the dj okay and more more instrumental part mm-hmm. And is, is there any special collaborations on the album that we should be looking out for, or, or who, what singers have you worked with, and what other artists have yeah, you worked with? Yeah, actually, uh, the, um, I, I was lucky to have uh, these two parts. So the, the, let's say the, the, the first part is is pretty easy because I'm 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 alone, and the second the second part is only collaboration. I have mm-hmm. names uh, like uh, Ray Fonder. Ray Fonder is a is a guy doing some rap. Uh, from Florida, mm-hmm. and the track is, is very good. You will see this guy. In, I choose uh, people I loved or people I really like their their voice. So I have also Chris Willis. Mm-hmm. Chris Willis is on board with me with two songs on this brand new album. I have a, a girl called uh, A Girl and a Gun. We made a track last year called Maximus. Yeah. And I have I have also uh, Bob Sinclair. Bob Sinclair is doing a track with me. And uh, we have uh, ma- many other people like Geister or Atiras, the uh, Canadian producer. Uh, and and how do you <clears throat> how do you find these people? You know, how do you keep? You've been doing it for twenty five years. You've worked with some of the best in the business. So how do you keep unearthing talent? And what do you look for in in talent and collaborations? Do you have a manager that does it, or do you listen to tracks through your DJ? Well, that's very 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 basic process uh-huh. uh one one uh to give you the story uh i was i was supposed to deliver this album uh last year mm-hmm. and last year when i when i had everything more or less ready i was listening to all the tracks i made and let's let's say a lot of those tracks was uh produced to have name with me <laughs> and the uh, ultra my, my label company in usa introduced me to a lot of different people uh, because that was cool to have this name with you because this guy have uh, two millions of followers. followers. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you know, th- this girl, 
uh, she's, she's beautiful and you have to work with her. And then I, I made like 15 tracks. And after one year, I was listening to all the tracks. I say, no, that's not me. I'm not going to use those tracks. I'm going to start from scratch. Okay. And, and Ultra say, oh, are you sure? This is good names. I say, yeah, good names maybe in terms of connection. But this is not really what I'm looking for. So I want to work with people I, I love mm -hmm. or people, uh, something more natural. And that's why the, the list um, of people working with me in vocally, uh, in, in the album, are very people I've chosen because I work with those people already. Mm -hmm. Or I discovered the, those, um, the, the work through internet. And um, let's say I don't need a manager for that. You know, I'm mm -hmm. going straight to the point. If I have somebody, I love uh, her voice. Mm -hmm. I just send a direct mail. Say, okay, I love your voice. Let's let's try to work together. You know. And but how do you, how do you discover those voices? Do you like troll uh, SoundCloud or you you know have you got friends list that you check out? Yeah, stuff no, or? I'm. I'm you know I'm I'm surfing. Yeah, I'm yeah, surfing on yeah. the net, and sometimes you, you you go from one SoundCloud to one Facebook, and then you go back to. And one day you find a different voice. Mm -hmm. That's the when I, I was discovering uh, the artist called uh, a girl and a gun. Yeah. Uh, her voice is very special. She's uh, they have she has something very special in her voice, and I found her voice through a, I, I believe that was a Facebook account. And I was listening some de demo. I said, "Wow, oh, I love her voice." And mm -hmm. let's try to work together. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, brilliant. So let let's go back to. Uh, 1989 i mean let's back just, in the time back in the time listen let's you've 25 years to get through here so we'll try and do it as quickly as we can uh, <laughs> you you had a studio in central paris and you you got to work with some of the sort of you know paris yep. has produced some incredible electronic dance music artists from you, you've mentioned bob sinclair you know jean-michel jarre you know yeah. how how did you start the studio and how did you get into the whole thing the, um, okay, the quickly, um, when I was six, uh, I was lucky to have a classical music education at school, learning piano and, and drums mm -hmm. and writing song and, and read music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, then when I was 16, I fell in love with uh, all the machine. It was my half geek part of me. Mm -hmm. So uh, when uh, I have a 17, uh, the, the music and the computer merge for the first mm -hmm. time with the first software can give you the, the way to produce music with the computer. Mm -hmm. That was the music by computer. That was a revolution, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then uh, as soon as I, um, I knew I want to produce music with my computer, that was very clear in my mind. So I, I just set up my first home studio and then I have the, the studio in Paris. And uh, that was uh, in the beginning of the 90s. Mm -hmm. And there is, as, as you mentioned, we ha I was lucky to have a lot of friends coming daily, like um, Chris, uh, like uh, Bob Sinclair, like uh, Martin Solveig, or, or David Guetta. Uh, and David m m made a huge stop in my studio because we we worked together nine years to co-produce 118 songs together, mm -hmm. a three full album production. So this small recording studio in the heart of Paris was really a good USB. A good hub. It wasn't sorry by USB. A good <laughs> hub to, to, to connect people, and um, to especially in that time, that was the beginning of the French Touch movement. Mm -hmm. So um, I had a lot of guys coming to the studio just for listening track or just to play me some songs, mm -hmm. and um, that was a good timing to start and a good location. And I, the one thing is always fascinating me the, the French sound from, you know, Thomas Bangalter, Daft Punk, uh, Cassius what there was a totally unique sound and groove and just the stuff that was coming out of paris and indeed probably france was just head and shoulders above anything that was coming out of the uk and stuff what what was it that gave paris that sort of unique groove that unique sound you know it was a disco sound wasn't it it was a i, be I believe uh, we had we had the um, the um, in, two, in 2000 we start to use the the French input from the past, uh -huh. and that was the disco. Disco. Yeah. We were very, very. We were very f not famous, but we are very in advance. Uh, uh, but that was a uh, talking. That was in the eighties, I believe. Disco was the seventies, seventies or eighties. So we had a huge producer, French producer, uh, Parisian producer, produced that thing. And when in two thousand the French touch 
movement starts again. Uh, we just try. We're just starting to use those uh, background uh, knowledge about that kind of music, the disco. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why we had this evolution from what the, 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 the uh, parents made, you know? Mm -hmm. You've had a hugely varied career, so you've worked with the likes of Jean-Michel Jarre, Cassius, yes. Kylie, mm -hmm. to Tool Room, you, you know, you've done Tool Room stuff right up to the present day, and you've played yeah. main stages at, at Ultra and Tomorrowland and stuff, so how do you keep current? How do you keep on the cutting edge of dance music? Because it has changed hugely from, from when you yeah. started. Yeah, it's changed so much, you know, especially the, this is a brand new job. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking about uh, be a producer or be a DJ, this is a brand new job. 25 years ago when I started, I was in the basement. Nobody knows know my name mm -hmm. and uh, uh, completely in the dark. And uh, if you ask to a uh, young people 25 years in the, in the past, do you want to be a DJ? Say, eh, it sucks. I don't want to be a DJ. I prefer to be behind the bar making cocktails. I'm going to make much more money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, and now, 25 years after that, we are uh, on the main stage doing a huge festival. And it's completely a new job. And in terms of music, let's say I was lucky to have this classical music education. Helps, I believe it helps me a lot to um, move from one different project, one to another different project. As, as you told me, as you told just right now, uh, going from uh, uh, two rooms compilation producer to uh, also making music for movies, uh, mm -hmm. like a classical way of uh, writing music in string and cello and uh, all the acoustic stuff, give, give me a wide range to play with music every day. Mm -hmm. And then I never made that job to be famous or to be successful or also to have a, a, a lot of money back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just met that thing by patient and when I produced the, the first track with David Guetta, Just a Little More Love, that mm -hmm. was in my small recording studio in Paris, nobody was very excited about that track because there was a electro with some gospel voices on the top. That was a strange and a weird song, but I was really in love with this, with this style. Mm -hmm. And um, I always been motivated by what I'm what I like the most to do but and let's say what I like the, the most to do is making music mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm not following you know I'm just uh, following the wind you know like, like this <laughs> but uh, to, to let's go back to those early Goetta tracks you know just they, they have become classics uh, how did you approach do you write the vocals for that do you write the you know do you no, the, the melody the, line or do you hand over a backing yeah. track no that was basically very uh, uh, easy process uh, because both uh, David and I was uh, we were DJ in the same time in Paris yeah we were just uh, using a lot of instrumental tracks so we were producing only instrumental tracks and then um, uh, one day we met uh, Chris Willis the singer uh, f was coming from the gospel world he didn't have any idea about how dance music can be big you know and uh, he came in Paris and, uh, and uh, <coughs> we played to Chris a lot of different instrumental DJ track we made mm -hmm. and uh, Chris said oh yeah I like this one this one maybe and then we start to talk about the melody can we make can you just make a small melody on the top few notes only and then the magic start like starts like that mm -hmm. that was a brand new thing for us to work with a singer because before that uh, we were only between DJ and producer making music instrumental underground music mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and meeting uh, people can with his voice brings your project to another level was something new for us mm -hmm. um, and were you sort of you, I take it you were very taken aback by the the global appeal of this track that it, it charted in the UK and, and you know around yeah. the world and has become you know a huge anthem was that a real turning point for the career um more, more or less, yeah. yes, yes, because you are very happy to see that everybody loves your track, uh -huh. and uh, it makes it makes you comfortable to go deeper in what you are feeling, and uh, for for that part, for that part, this is great because it helps me a lot, and David, David and I to go in that direction to say, okay, let's do, because you know the way we were working with David Guetta was very. Uh, unique uh, we David and I we were running 
uh, a different company. Uh, I was more into the advertising, uh, producing music, mm -hmm. and David was more into the entertainment, and he was, um, he was owning uh, a nightclub. Mm -hmm. And then one day per week, we decided to make a pause of the regular job and just focusing on making music and do exactly what we want to do, not focusing on the, the marketing part of the job or even know uh, if we're going to use the song, you know, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. having fun. Yeah, yeah. Every, yeah. every Monday, as uh, two friends uh, meeting just to play tennis ball every, every Monday. So well, we decide to every Monday to say, okay, we're going to do music and make a pose to do all the classical and traditional uh, jobs. And um, then when the, the first track we made was just a little more love and was successful, yeah. we decide with David, maybe we can make two days, let's say uh, Monday and Thursday. And, uh, and then we make a second day and then we came and we made the track uh, uh, Love Don't Let Me Go and a huge track and then we decide, okay, so we have to do that full job now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we, it changed, it changed the, uh, the priority of the, the time schedule. Mm -hmm. But um, let's say the global feeling was the same from the beginning, you know, just having fun with music. Let's get down to some uh, studio talk because obviously you split your time between Paris and LA. Do you have yep. two setups, two studios, or what yes. is what is your current setup? I mean, is it a very do you mix in the box, or do you have? I I would presume that you're uh, so a let's say I'm, gear. Yeah, I'm I'm very flexible because I'm lucky to have two different configurations. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, in Paris and in LA, I have the same in the box solution, which is a very good speakers, good screen, and a good room. Yeah, yeah. And everything else is, is the laptop. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then in Paris, I have also, I'm lucky to have a different rooms with more analog, analog uh, gears. And uh, it's depend of the, the, um, the project. Uh, I've just uh, been lucky to co produce the new Jean Michel Jarre album. Uh, including uh, 15 collaborations with a lot of different people, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Massive Attack uh, to uh, to Moby, uh, going through uh, Geza Felstein, a lot of different producers. Mm -hmm. So to to work with all those producers, I have a lot, I have to use a lot of different gears, mm -hmm. and I was lucky to have this um, backup studio with a lot of good old things from the past, just to to fit with everybody, to have a good connection with everybody. You know, mm -hmm. so um, I have these two set up. And uh, I'm moving from one to uh, to other to the other, depending of the, the project. And when you're working with like Jean-Michel Jarre, co-producing an album, do you have to switch your brain? Because I mean, you're you make a yeah. lot of club music, but Jean-Michel Jarre is not really a club person. No, he's, yeah, he's yeah. a he's a soundscape person. So how do you approach the two different? How do you change I'm, your brain? I'm, I'm just changing my hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, thing, the thing, let's say the hat when I'm. I have the hat Joaquin Garro producer and for my own album, mm -hmm. uh, I'm producing techno track and electronic track and, and dance floor for mm -hmm. dance floor. Then when I'm, I'm taking my hat of producer, I'm going to give my best I can do for the project or for different artists. Mm -hmm. So um, when I'm working with Jean-Michel, I'm, I'm flexible and I'm going his direction and I help him to uh, achieve uh, the, the, what we want to do together, mm -hmm. but this is his project. So because this is his project, let's say he's, he's driving the car, but yeah. I'm just uh, on the side to say, okay, maybe we can try to do that and that, you know. So, so. so it's kind of a role, this is something I want to explore because young guys watching this, uh, the role of the producer is something that doesn't really happen anymore with, with the electronic yeah. music. So c give us an insight into your production hats. Yeah. You know, are you, you're, you say he's driving. You're. Are you sculpting signs for him? Are you creating the soundscape, or are you? How do you approach it? Do you oversee it as a? You know, you're you're pushing as him in producer. one directions. Uh, you know, um, you're 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 very true because the the new generation don't understand don't know these two jobs. Yeah. They're just merging two things. When I'm on stage and I'm DJing and I'm pr and I'm playing my own track, mm -hmm. I'm full. 100% Joaquin Garro artist mm -hmm. and producer. This is my name, Big Capitals on the flyer because this is really me on stage. Mm -hmm. When I'm, when somebody asks me to produce or co-produce a track for for him, for 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 his, sorry for this, um, 
I'm behind the track. So let's say I'm a producer. I'm, this is not going to be my name in big letters on the track. This is Bob Sinclair track, mm -hmm. but I'm co-producing the track with him. It means that I have a global view mm -hmm. uh, going from what kind of sound we can use uh, to um, what kind of, uh, of um, artistic direction, mm -hmm. you know? And this is, this is a different job to be a producer. And for me, this is really strange. Uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. This is very strange when I'm listening to the to the radio, and I'm, I've, I'm uh, the, the the DJ uh, the, the the guy behind the microphone say, "Hey, let's let's listen to the new Avicii," and boom, and play the song, and you have a girl singing. I mm -hmm. say, "What a new? So Avicii is singing or what? No, <laughs> no. Uh, so you just have to understand that now, actually today, there's a not a confusion, but it's a, this is a new situation of People, they just know the name of Avicii, but she, they don't know the name of the girl who's singing the song, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is, for me, something different. And I'm really trying to keep these two separate words of be an artist and, uh, and play my own music on stage, and then having another job and be producer for other people, yeah. which, which means you have to stay in the shadow, behind, and just give all the, the thing you know to optimize the song you are producing for this artist yeah. cool i mean it you, yeah. you make a very valid point and, and somebody's mentioned it to me before that avici's big hit i think wake me up you knew you didn't know who the singer was it's yeah that's, still, that's right nobody can yeah. and that is one of the the biggest tracks of the last five years and and the guy had actually had, had a hit single prior to that so i think he, he kind of got hijacked but you know that's the way it is now uh let's get into uh Favorite synth? What what is your favorite go to synth? Well, I, I like uh, the your synth. <laughs> oh, okay, of course you do. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no. I, uh, you know, I was thinking of you because um, um, when I uh, when I produce, um, um, especially bass drum, I'm, I'm using a lot of your your kick. Uh, uh, the the module, the module kick is is perfect. Really, Brilliant. I love it. Well, you'll be brilliant. pleased to know that uh, the new version is nearly, nearly ready to go. Ah, nice. So, yeah, so yeah. Uh, send, send me the V2. Uh, oh, absolutely. And, and there's okay. some uh, really brilliant improvements that will blow your mind. Really, really oh, that's, that's That's cool to know that because um, I was wondering how to make an evolution on that plugin because this plugin is working very well already. Mm -hmm. So I have some ideas. And um, but that's good. We we I'm gonna be honored to discover your your new I, stuff. We'll 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 definitely get you a beta copy. I mean, we're talking it's weeks away, if if if, okay. if not days away, you know. So hopefully it'll be. Ah, very great, great, great. So, so, so yes, kick. In, yes. Uh, in terms of sound, um, and and synth, um, I'm using a lot of different uh, plugin. Uh, let's say I'm a big fan of Arturia sound. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they're French also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, I love I love the silent one, mm -hmm. the silent one from Lenard Digital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I try to to make to make my my choice also uh, when I, I I was I was starting this brain this crazy project of the producer box. We're gonna talk in the next few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to collect all the my favorite plugin in one. And just to to organize all those different plugins to be in a single box, and it's going to be the producer box. So I, I've chosen uh, also I've chosen also um, uh, UVI. Sugarbite, yeah, yeah, UVI yeah, and yeah. Sugarbite. The the Egoist is a very good one. I really love this one. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a lot of different uh, good plugins. UVI, UVI they're doing a very good job in terms of quality. Uh, the, the sound is is very pure. This mm -hmm. is what I like. I like the. Um, the new um, the the serum, which is a very good synth mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Steve Duda, mm -hmm. um, and I and I love uh, A A uh, Anna uh, A A A N for for you yeah 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 yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a good one also yeah um, yeah there's, there's a lot of very lot of different stuff I'm I'm using and is there is there one particular synth that you would just you constantly it is your starting point or do you think well, I, I want the sort of '80s vibe here, so I'll, I'll lift the Arturia. Um, yeah, um, the 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 one I'm using for every session uh, is the Reactor. Okay. Because Reactor, it's so flexible. It's a, it's a, like a big, giant modulator synth, and it allow me to do uh, my own patch, and and to have my different sound. And when I start to the the production process of this brand new album, for the first three months. I was listening to 
all the sound bank I had, mm -hmm. and I was trashing everything I never used in the past. Okay, I never use this one. I will never need this one. I was trashing, and then I took. I, I made the same thing for all the the, the plugging and setup, and um, I realized that Reactor was one of my favorite one because I, I produced so many different patches from drums to synth with this uh, modular. Uh, synth. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, it's one of my favorite for that. It's very flexible. So you would be you'd be quite competent and quite happy programming synths and and sound yes. design. That's I mean, is that a love of yours? Yes, sound design is very. It's a different hat also. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah, because to be honest, uh, sometime um, in the past I was lucky to do only sound design for movies, for example. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and then they asked me just to come to do some sound design for one particular scene and that was that was very cool to to play with that sound and uh, using modular to scratch because especially with 25 years of, of background we were not uh, we didn't have access to this kind of amazing tool mm -hmm. and today it's so easy to scratch the sound but you just have to understand that uh, 10 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, that was not possible to scratch the sound. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. only speed or slow down. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you, you change the tune and it was impossible to keep the tune. So all these new uh, tools give us a brand new approach of the, the sound design. And I was also super exciting about designing plugging or designing sound or, you know, the geek side still in me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very happy and... Uh, and uh, proud to to pr to participate also with different uh, trademark of creating uh, a new creating new synth new sounds you know brilliant brilliant well let's get on to the important issue here that you've just finished mastering your brand new album which is 9624 but yeah. you have a kickstarter campaign on the back of this album can you tell me a little bit about yeah. what what that is Okay, I, have, I just launched a Kickstarter campaign. The name is Producer Box. Mm -hmm. So Producer Box is very easy to understand. This is a box for producer. So this yeah, is yeah, for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> so the Producer Box, if you go on Kickstarter and you're going to check the Producer Box uh, uh, Kickstarter campaign, um, I, was look, I, was, I was searching to have the, um, uh, the best... I was looking to have... The, the, what's the best way to transmit 25 years of experience into a single box mm -hmm. and if you look at the the the, the, the design it's a, it's like a, a box with a cme keyboard inside and uh, in the box you have a huge hard drive and in this one terabyte hard drive you you will find all the software but you will find all the knowledge all the tutorial some bank and you and you have also access to all the master session of my brand new album which means this is the first time if you have this producer box and the hard drive and the, the keyboard mm -hmm. if you connect the hard drive you're gonna have access to everything mm -hmm. which means also the live ableton uh, license mm -hmm. yeah, and you're gonna be able to open all the master session mm -hmm. have access to all stems producing your own music starting with my session doing your own session and then um, and the good thing also is you have also the, the tutorial. You have eight hours of tutorial just to explain step by step how to produce music and how to use those those plugins who are included in the hard drive. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm you know this is like a dream box for a producer because mm -hmm. you have everything from license deal to sound to sunset to library and to it's a it's 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 a it's a very good deal i believe yeah so the, the only thing you need is is your is a, is a laptop you plug and you've got your keyboard yeah. you have all, so you get all the, all the software laptop. you get all the sessions and, and you're ready to go i have it up on screen here you can yeah. go to kickstarter.com forward slash projects forward slash joachim yeah. garou forward slash producer well, you just have to if you just uh, take Search. producer box uh, you're gonna find it you yeah. know it's perfect and you have got a sizable chunk already in and 14 days to go guys so if you want to get on and have a look at that you can yeah, see if you, especially if you go down on the page you, you will see what's, what's included in that in the in the producer box and you know it's very easy take the keyboard to connect the hard drive and uh, and you're ready you're ready to play because you have everything and if you go down you will see the so this is the CME keyboard and in the yeah. hard drive you have all those plugins you have and Learner Digital you have Arturia Mini V you have Sugar Bytes you have the D16 Lush 101, you have Sigmund, you have a UVI 
you've a ton yeah. tal baseline you have yeah. and what a lot of plugin I'm, that design myself and also uh, uh the good thing is if you check the numbers uh, if you're adding all those numbers you get, you reach uh, 3500 and i'm selling that box for 600, 600. which is if you go down, go go down. Yeah, go yeah, down, yeah, Chris. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, down, yeah, down, yeah, down, yeah, down, yeah, down. It's down, a long down. page, you know. Kisato is on. Go down and uh, yeah, the tutorial. Yeah, oh, look, look go. those numbers. Okay, you have the numbers over there. There you go. So yeah, you can see all the, the uh, yeah, license. all the list we have and the license. And also, this is not only a license because I gave. I'm I'm giving also all the sound library I produce. Mm -hmm. For example, um, I'm using Silent One, and I'm, I'm giving also my sil Silent One uh, setup, mm -hmm. sound set I produce for this album. Yeah, yeah. And also, I think it's, it's great for producer just to be able to be to go inside the track. Yeah. Because that's the first time you have the master session of all track from the brand new album. So I think I mean the key thing there is you can go in and look at EQ settings, compressor settings. You can yep. look at side chaining. You can look at how you've bust and what reverbs you've used, and yeah. and, and save those you know presets for use in your own tracks and and the sounds you know. So you've got, you've got templates to as a springboard to, to do your own production. Yeah, stuff. and those templates uh, are free to use for commercial use. Yeah. So it means also I had to fight with uh, my publisher company just to explain that. If people buy in the box, they're gonna have the stems, and if they're using those stems to man, to do to produce their own song, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna suit them because they're, this is their their own song using a part of my track. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the publisher was really confused about that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, because this is my own music and I'm producing and I'm the owner of all the tracks and all stems, I've decided to give it for free. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is including in the box, which means. You have the session. You you have the producer box. You connect the hard drive. You open a master session. You mute the voice. Take away the bass. Play your bass. Change the tempo. You can have your own song mm -hmm. and and put your name Chris mm -hmm. songs, brand new songs, and you don't have to mention you did that song by using a lot of elements from my own song. Okay, okay. So that's a kind of. You it's a free copyright. Yeah, it's like you, a free copyright. Yeah, so, so it's a truly like a sample CD. You, you can use exactly. you, you're you're purchasing it and you can use it in your tracks. This is something that I kind of noticed about you is that you you embrace these new technologies and new ways of working and stuff. Do you get excited by this or or do you get scared? You know, for somebody who's been in the business twenty five years, social media and stuff can be a kind of scary, scary thing. And but you seem to embrace it. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, first, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to share that, that knowledge with people mm -hmm. for uh, one reason, for, let's say for two main reasons. The first one is uh, I, I, didn't have, I didn't have access to all this knowledge when I was uh, 16 years old. Yeah. And uh, giving all this access in few hours, access to 25 years Condensing in, in two hours, it's I think it's a it's an amazing, um, good thing to start mm -hmm. with this knowledge, and uh, so I did this thing because it was not existing when I was when I was young, yeah. <laughs> and, and and then number two, I'm very excited about how the new generation gonna use this knowledge to bring to another level, mm -hmm. and this is it's I think it's. Uh, very good to be able to transmit my passion of music with this kind of Kickstarter campaign because having the producer box at home, you're going to have access to everything uh, from my 25 years of recording session with David Guetta, David Bowie, all this kind of thing. You're going to be able to access to all this kind of sound also. And um, I'm not afraid of, technolo of technology because I think it's a, you can't go again technology first mm -hmm. and you have to be friend with the technology. And um, I just want to focus more on the music now. And if you're telling me uh, I have to share my time going on Facebook and, uh, and, and tweet and uh, using a lot of uh, different uh, channel, we are not talking about music. Mm -hmm. We are just talking about uh, marketing side yeah. and um, I really want to go back more in the music which is I think the main thing mm -hmm. so that's why also I produced this producer box because producer box is just around music 
we are not talking about social media anymore. We're just focusing on, on the, the heart of the patient, which is the sound, the yeah. music. Perfect. So um, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of this brand new object. This is, you know, on, this is 599 US dollars. And, um, and uh, we, this is a limited edition. I've, I've produced, uh, I will produce only 1,000 copies. We sold already 400. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we have uh, two weeks to go, so um, go! Big, big promotion. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for joining us today on Sonic Academy. Okay, Kim, it's thank been, you for your it's time. Been, it's so. been lovely to, to sort of pick your brains, and you've you've worked with such an array of people, and I'm fascinated by your sound and by your working practices and how you can still be so driven and so passionate and so enthusiastic about um, uh, the like you, Like you, my friend. You're passionate. You're in this, in this job for a long time. We have the same the same profile. That's the same. We The number one thing is the passion you have in, inside you. Yeah, yeah. It's not... Uh, if without that, with the, without the thing, you're not going to be able to do that job. Exactly. Like well, I think if anybody yeah. thinks it's about sort of, as you say, stats on marketing or you know Facebook likes or anything, it's not about. It's about having yeah. passion. I think every time we do these interviews, you can tell from the producers that we get on that they are just live, eat, and breathe music, and that's what it is about. Thank you so much. Best of luck with the Thank album. You. When is the album out? Uh, it's going to be January 22nd. 22nd. And then the, the name is 9624. Easy to for a producer to do. And I, I, will, I, will send you, I will send you the album because I'm very proud of the sound. Because when you're producing a full album starting from scratch and doing only 9624 for all different levels, yeah. you just have to imagine the, the final sound is wow it's so so good it's perfect <laughs> well i really look forward to that hitting my inbox yeah. it's no problem uh, listen guys i hope you've all got something from that and thank you again for giving us your time and we'll thank see you us all very very soon <laughs>